Hey, Horse Center fans, it's our Christmas edition of Horse Center. What could be more fun? Matt, what do we have for him today? Hey, Brian, what's what's better than the day after Christmas celebration to go to opening day at Santa Anita, where there are four graded stakes races? The Malibu is phenomenal. Absolutely. A great Malibu grade one. We got the grade one La Brea and the grade two Mathis Brothers Mile and maybe a Pegasus Prep in the grade two San Antonio. Watch what me and Matt have to say about those four big races the day after Christmas at San Anita. Now. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Ship. And how are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. Ho, ho, ho. It's the uh, opening day after Christmas Santa Anita card show. Well, first thing I think we should do, Matt, is we should wish everyone out there in Horse Center land a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to all you and yours. But yeah, one of the reasons Matt and I love Christmas so much is what happens the day after. Out at Santa Anita, they have a wonderful card for us, folks. A bunch of stakes races. Four of them are either grade one, grade two. And those are the four races that Matt and I are going to focus on today, Matt. Let's start with what I think is the biggest of them all. That's the grade one Malibu City of Light won it last year, Matt. This year, we are looking at a deep, strong field for the seven furlong grade one Malibu. Yeah, Brian, I tell you, uh, you know, aside from when the Breeders' Cup is out in California at Santa Anita, I, I can't remember in, in the last few years a field and a stakes race at Santa Anita as full and deep as this Malibu Malibu is. Yeah, the Malibu is is is, is a special kind of race because it's the last three year old restricted race on the dirt in 2018. So uh, it's it it's quite a a combination of horses. There's all these three year olds in here. A lot of them are looking at this opportunity as the best chance they're going to have to pick up a grade one uh, in the rest of their career. And then there's some other ones in there that I, I'm not sure might be in this race for a prep because they have bigger things in mind. Maybe a couple of the Bafferts are like that also. But uh, 16 horses, 14. 14 will be in the race going seven furlongs. It's going to be quite a cavalry charge coming down the stretch, I think, uh, Mr. Zipsy. Yeah, it's going to be fun, Matt. And and what I really like about this race is as a handicapper, as a as a prospect for making some money, Matt, I, I am definitely going to be uh, looking at some uh, 10 cent supers, some uh, trifectas in here, because I think there's a lot of long shots because of the depth of the field that are going to uh, sneak in or very well may sneak into those lower spots on the trifecta and superfecta. So that's fun as a better, Matt. I think I think there's going to be a nice payoff in here. You know, I guess we're talking about McKinsey coming off a, a very disappointing race in the Breeders' Cup Classic where he took a ton of money. Remember how much he got hammered in that Breeders' Cup Classic coming off the Penn Derby, the nice Penn Derby return win. He didn't run that day, but you would think back in California for trainer Bob Baffert, the son of Street Sense, one of the best uh, three-year-olds in the country early in the year. And then, like I said, that nice Penn Derby win, he should be uh, he should be ready to run a much better race than he did in the Breeders' Cup. And, of course, it's lesser competition. But as Matt and I are telling you, folks, it's not an easy race. I expect Copper Bullet, Matt, who was one of the best two-year-olds in the country last year, early last year, came back with a really nice return win to be uh, to be bet a lot in here. Look for him to be maybe the second choice on the odds. Axelrod, also coming out of the Breeders' Cup Classic, should take some money. He actually made a move in that Breeders' Cup Classic before fading down the stretch. And then maybe the most likely winner of all, Matt, I, I think you like him a little bit, but he has been away for a while, is Kanthaka. But Kanthaka can rally, and Kanthaka really likes seven furlongs. Yeah, and, and, and uh, some of the things you mentioned are, are part of what makes this Malibu such an interesting uh race for handicappers because there are a lot of quality horses who have been off for you know since may since june 
you, you've got to throw in there Salamini, also one of the four uh, uh, Baffert horses that are likely to make the main field. Salamini, I mean, he was at the top of many people's lists for uh, this year's Derby, has been off since June. Um, Axeman for uh, Baffert has been off since July. Uh, Baffert also has Nero in there, um, who had a nice comeback allowance win. Um, so there's all kinds of things going on. Like you mentioned, Kanthaka, uh, off since May, uh, personally, all those Bafferts in there, you'd think one of them would win the race, but I'm not going that way, Brian. I, I don't like, uh, where all these Baffert horses are. I don't think seven furlongs. With McKinsey as again heavily bet favorite is uh, is a smart bet at all. Um, Solomini drew way outside again. I don't think seven furlongs is a good spot for for this one with Axeman off since July. Out of the Bafferts, I think I like uh, Nero the best, but I'm going to steer away from them just for value. Um, I think you mentioned. I'm going to go with Kenthaka. He loves the seven furlongs. He loves Santa Anita. I know he drew outside, but for Kenthaka, that's not so bad. He, he He's going to be clear out there when he's making his move. Um, I wish he had a race back, but um, I'm going to throw a bomb, a big, big, big bomb in there to, to consider. Uh, Majestic Dunhill is a horse that I know is making a big class move up here. But in his uh, in his first race, going from turf to dirt out uh, at Laurel for trainer George Weaver, ran a pretty good seven furlong race. And maybe this is a horse who found something that he's good in. Closing move that I love going seven furlongs. Horse has been out here at Santa Anita, worked on the track. So uh, uh, this is not a little long shot. This one's going to be 20, maybe 30 to 1. Yeah, Matt, uh, he almost has to be with the number of horses. You mentioned a lot of them already in here. And and Matt, I would warn you or warn anyone watching here, if you like somebody in here, I wouldn't worry too much about the odds. Yeah, maybe McKinsey, Copper Bullet uh, are, are a little bit lower, but uh, you're going to get some good odds on some good horses in here. You you mentioned Nero. Um, Nero Nero's probably 10 to 1 in this field, so uh, don't... Uh, don't jump off too much just because of the odds, because of the overall depth of the field. You landed on a couple of horses that like to rally, and I, I think that's a good uh, a good way to go in this field, folks. I think we're going to see a strong pace. There is speed, and uh, we we should see horses picking them up down the lane. Kentake, I already said, is, is probably the most likely winner in my eyes just because this is his distance. I know he's been away, but he should be ready to roll with a little bit of pace at seven furlongs right up his alley. Listen, I think McKinsey could win. I think Copper Bullock can win. I think Axelrod can win. But what Matt is saying, and, and what I agree with to some extent here, is is at, as those maybe the three favorites, uh, I don't like them enough to be excited about them. Maybe I'll play them a little bit in the exotics, but uh, there are a lot of other options. Matt mentioned the horse who won first time out at Laurel on dirt last time. I'm a little, I don't like him quite as much as Matt just because it looked like a very fast early pace and they ran kind of slow late, which may have helped him do what he did in that race. But he's certainly, Majestic Dunhill for George Weaver, certainly a horse to think about using in your exotics. There's a couple others in here, though, I like a little bit better than that. They might be a little lower. But seven furlongs with this pace set up, I think seven trumpets, who's run a lot of good sprint okay. races and proven to be able to get into the money in a lot of good races this year is very interesting. Another West Point horse, by the way, Matt Kanthaka and Seven Trumpets, both were West Point thoroughbreds. Uh, he's coming off a race where he faded a little bit in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, but that was against City of Light and, and Seeking the Soul. So I want to get Seven Trumpets in the exotics. I also think identity uh, politics for trainer Chad Brown is very interesting. Usually Chad Brown horses get bet. I don't think he'll get bet a ton here. He's never run against stakes horses. But what I really like about him, seven for a long trip with speed, two decent turf races to start his career. And then Chad Brown had the great idea to put him on dirt. And I love his maiden win where he just picked him up and laid him down in the stretch. And last time he ran against some decent horses and just missed with a strong late rush. 
So I think identity politics is an interesting horse, kind of along your majestic Dunhill lines, Matt. Yeah, big odds, and and and, and it's a really understandable. Brian's looking at those trifectas and superfectas because uh, with fourteen horses in there, that's a great time to be playing those kind of exotic wagers. Yeah, and we have four big races in a row out here at Santa Anita on Wednesday, Matt. The Malibu is the last of the four, race nine. The race before that might have some Pegasus World Cup implications. It's certainly led by the Jerry Hollendorf for train Battle of Midway, Matt. This is a horse who ran third in the Kentucky Derby as a three-year-old. He won the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile as a three-year-old. He missed a, a, a lot of last year, and he came back maybe just a little bit dull in his first two, but his last two... Wins in California have looked good, and with his consistency and his uh, his class, Battle of Midway certainly is the horse to beat as the favorite in tomorrow uh, Wednesday San Antonio. Yeah, that's for sure. It seems like Jerry Hollendorfer's got Battle of Midway back on his winning ways, um, and uh, the last race that he won, he beat uh, da Dabster in there, and and I think Dabster's probably going to be the second choice, and and those two are, you know, those are two pretty darn good horses. Um, we don't have that same kind of deep feel, quality field in the San Antonio that we mentioned in uh, the Malibu. To me, it's unlikely that the winner is going to be a horse uh, outside of Battle of Midway and Dabster in there. I probably like Battle of Wh uh, Midway a little bit more. Uh, one horse in there that's a little bit interesting to me is uh, Gift Box. Uh, again, uh, another horse that's been off for a while, Gift Box, who we might remember from a few years ago on the Derby Trail in New York. Um, is now making his debut for John Sadler. And I find that a little bit interesting. He's got a little quality in there. He's now a five-year-old. Um, so uh, Gift Box for me is a horse that I'm a little bit interested in, but the top two are tough. Yeah, the top two are tough. Gift Box, Matt, I think is going to uh, get a lot of money. Uh, First time, like you said, for John Sadler, used to be trained by uh, Chad Brown out in New York and ran a lot of good races. Uh, he's had some physical problems. He's had some, I guess this is coming off his third layoff now in his racing career. Uh, but uh, the, the talent's there. You saw it in his last race he ran months ago. Uh, but uh, I, I think he'll get a lot of money. And, I, and I'm wondering if Dapster might even drop down to the third choice. Certainly Battle of Midway should be the favorite. But gift box might take a lot of money in here. I think those are the only three they bet. Some people were talking about tatters to riches. I'm not huge on him. I think the three-year-olds are decent airstrike, you long warrior, but probably a cut below. Yeah. For me, again, I'm looking to get some horses into the exotic. So if if I'm with you, I like Battle of Midway and Dabster best. But uh, there's two interesting horses here because I think all the horses that are bet uh, want to be on or near the lead. Uh, of course, Battle of Midway and uh, Dabster pretty much went head and head uh, the, almost the whole race last time in the Native Diver. So if we're looking for some horses to pick up the pieces. I think there are a couple of interesting ones, maybe to get second or third. And that's the uh, DeSormos brothers, Sonneteer, a really good looking horse who's mm -hmm. kind of been in and out a little bit in his career. But if he's ready to uh, fire off the layoff with some speed, I think Sonneteer could jump up. And then there's Beachview. Um, who's run mostly on turf, but if you look at his form, he's got some good dirt form in there, too. It's coming out of a long race, but I, I think if, if there is some tired horses in the lane, Beachview might be worth a, a, a shot. Again, after the top three, I think they all have odds. All right, Matt, we're going to move from that grade two race number eight on the card right into another grade one, kind of the, uh, the, the sister uh, of the grade one Malibu. That's the La Brea, also seven furlongs. And this one's for three or Phillies, Matt. And I think we might be looking at the biggest favorite of the day in the undefeated dream trip. Yeah, and why not, Brian? It, right, it's the five for five career dream tree for, for Bob Baffert. Uh, the horse has not done anything wrong uh, in, in, in her career. The you know, the only questions you can put, throw up there about Dream Tree are, you know, she, she's got a lot of breaks, uh, a lot of layoffs in her, 
over the years, and 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 that's fair reason to have some questions. Uh, for me, uh, I know she's won at seven furlongs, but I don't know. I'm not sure that seven furlongs uh, is her best distance. The uh, I think her main competition in here is uh, is the other Baffert uh, named Emboldened. It's a Godolphin, and and Baffert has started to get. Uh, some quality Godolphin horses uh, in his barn. Again, it's another one who's got a big layoff, though. Um, uh, she's been off since uh, May. But I like the running style of Emboldened Embo- for the Seven Furlongs. And uh, I give her a little bit of a shot to upset. Yeah, yeah. Dream Tree, you know, we always look uh, for a way to beat the heavy favorite and reasons why to pick against the heavy favorite. But I, I just don't see a lot in here to really uh, discount Dream Tree. All she's done wrong is she's missed time. She's missed a, she missed a big chunk of the year in the middle. And then uh, she missed the Breeders' Cup, where I think she would have been one of the favorites in the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare Sprint. But she was, uh, she was over that little setback quickly, and she's ready for the grade one La Brea. I thought, listen, I thought her uh, return race at Saratoga in the Prioress was just outstanding. I have no qualms about her at seven furlongs, so she's she's a tough favorite to beat. Having said that, there are some interesting horses in here below her. Uh, I think they're all a cut below Dream Tree, but if Dream Tree doesn't run her very best, maybe they pop up. Matt mentioned in Bolden. I think she is a cut below in the Baffert barn. Um, I don't know that she's beaten really good ones. She's only had three lifetime races, but... She's a threat to rally for sure. Happy Like a Fool, I think, deserves to be the second choice. She's run against some very good sprinters out here in Kentucky uh, for trainer Wesley Ward, and she's really done nothing wrong in her career, and she's proven tough. She ran a good race, albeit she faded to sixth, but she wasn't beaten all that much in the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare Sprint after pressing that pace. Uh, Hot Autumn. Hot Autumn is cheaper for sure, but she's coming off a career best last time. Seven furlongs, so uh, hot autumn is one if she runs back to her last race to look at. And then you got the cowbred, Matt. Spice Perfection can rally like like emboldened, and Spice Perfection just throws in a lot of good races. And if you look at her last few, you know, she's starting to show that maybe she can run with this kind of filly. So all of them have a shot, but it's Dream Tree's race to lose in my eyes. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. All right, Matt, so that's three of the big races at Santa Anita on the day after Christmas down. Let's go down to the uh, seventh race, the race after the La Brea, the Mathis Brothers Mile. By the way, folks, this will be rolling pick threes throughout these big races. There's a pick five starting with the La Brea. There's a pick uh, four starting with this, the seventh race, the Mathis Brothers Mile. So lots of races to uh, kind of pair up in here with these big races, and they are consecutive, which is kind of nice. But I'm still looking a little bit more at the uh, at the vertical races within each race. And the Mathis Brothers Mild Matt, I think we have another pretty daunting favorite in here. Not unbeatable. He has been beaten. But River Boyne has won four stakes already this year. He runs well every time. Even when he loses, he runs well. And then you got to look at that turf record uh, at Santa Anita for the Jeff Mullins training. River Boyne, the Irish bred, is five for five at Santa Anita. Yeah, for sure, Brian. All those things that you said make uh, uh, River Boyne, in in my eyes, maybe the uh, the toughest horse to beat in the sequence that we're talking about. I don't think he's going to be uh, a bigger favorite than Dream Tree will be, but um, a- as this field of eleven plays out, to me, uh, River Boyne just has a tremendous class edge over the rest of the field uh, um yes uh he has you know he's lost some races in there but um some of the the horses that have uh, contended with him they're not in here and, and really the rest of the field is not of graded stakes quality like uh river boyne uh is graded stakes in in his pp's all the way back i think he's going to be uh, very tough to meet to beat in this mile yeah i am I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit more hopeful that that there is an upset possibility in here matt but yeah there's nothing much like dream tree there's not much bad you could say about river point i think he's even has a nice style 
One thing we got to mention, Matt, in this one mile race, there's a lot of speed. Uh, Pletcher's horse, Gidu, uh, countered some traffic trouble last time. Uh, he should be better, but he's got a lot of speed. And then certainly Gemintier and Snazzy Dresser are uh, real, real speed freaks, if you will. So ton of speed in here. And I think that sets up a rally. A river point can come from the middle of the pack, should get first run. And like Matt says, tough to beat. Uh, I'm looking at a horse uh, coming over from France. Now, he's coming off a layoff layoff as well. I I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. Sejo, Sejo. Uh, but the horse from France, he won his last two over there. First time here. First time Lasix. Uh, first time for trainer John Sadler. Irad Ortiz gets up. And if, they, if their fur is flying early, which I suspect, 44 flat, maybe look for him to really be rolling late. Uh, the other ralliers in here, Matt, I think are a cut below, but if that pace is fast enough, maybe they get in for a piece. I guess I like Desert Stone, the most of those long shot ralliers, hard boot, uh, fight on for Doug O'Neill. There's one other horse I want to mention because Shiver Me Timbers is a nice horse who probably can come off the pace a little bit. It's proven a nice horse on dirt, maybe not grade one, grade two quality, but a good, good enough dirt horse. And I tell you what, his grandsires on, on the male side, it's Harlan's Holiday. On the female side, it's Unbridled Song. So first time turf for Shiver Me Timbers, I think maybe he runs a race as well. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting race. And, and throughout the sequence, we've got some uh, big name horses, quality horses. You don't get a sequence like this very often, uh, racing fans. So be sure uh, after you're recovering from your all your Christmas celebrations and meals and present opening. Um, you can settle in and get a good spot on the couch. Or if you're in California, head out to Santa Anita. Um, and I want to wish uh, my friend Frank Miramati uh, good luck in his uh, return to Santa Anita as the uh, track announcer. Yeah, he's a good guy, Matt. He's a, uh, a funny guy for sure. He's a good announcer, but we both uh, enjoy spending time with Frank Miramati. So good luck to him. Good call on that, Matt. Hey, folks, uh, what a way to spend the first day after Christmas. I hope your Christmas is wonderful, but I hope uh, I hope you really enjoy these four big races at Santa Anita on Wednesday, the day after Christmas. Hopefully what Matt and I brought you today are some ideas on how to tackle you're betting on that day because it really is a great day to throw some money in your uh, in your account there and uh, take a shot, especially in that Malibu with uh, all those good horses with good odds. All right, Matt, one more parting shot or, or are you already done? You started your parting shots early, so I'm confused. Do you, do you have more for me? I, I got more, Brian. I do. Uh, I also want to uh, tell our fans and uh, that – our Philly Sooner Schooner had another workout the other day that looked good. Um, I assume she's probably getting close now to uh, returning to the races at fairgrounds, and we're excited about that. And, of course, I want to wish uh, our friend Merry Christmas, and thank you to Brett Workman for putting together the show. Thank you, Matt. Thank you to everybody that watches. Folks, this has been another great year on Horse Center. This will be our final show of 2018 we'll be back early in 2019 to get us going for some good racing next year but uh, as always it's been a great ride here on horse center thank you for watching remember if you haven't subscribed yet to our uh, youtube channel here on horse racing nation do it now and a special thanks to our year-long sponsor derby wars the best contest site out there folks we'll see you in 2019 merry christmas from matt and i here at horse center